For the remainder of lessons and videos uh, in under hypothesis testing, we're going to look at two sample comparison. So comparing the wind sample that we have here, this red bumpy curve, versus the natural gas sample, this blue bumpy curve. Uh, now, before we get into actually any actual hypothesis tests here, I want to talk a little bit about an additional variable that we're going to calculate out of this. So let's get to it. So the reason for calculating an additional variable here is to have something by which we can compare wind versus natural gas on an even basis. We can see clearly here that natural gas is producing a lot more energy than wind, and it also has a much larger forecasted peak, forecasted peak capacity than, than wind does. Because of these natural differences, and these natural differences arise because natural gas is a much larger system in the state of Texas than wind is. In other words, Texas relies way more on natural gas energy than wind energy. Um, but because of that, we're kind of comparing apples to oranges here. And we want to level this playing field and come up with a metric by which we can compare fairly wind versus natural gas and directly answer the, the question, well, which one has underperformed more? If we just looked at generation alone, well, we'd say wind is underperforming simply because it's not making as much energy as natural gas is. But that's not fair because there aren't as many wind turbines or there isn't as much wind energy to begin with in the state of Texas than there is natural gas. In other words, a lot Texas is way more dependent on, on natural gas here. So in order to, to facilitate a fair comparison between wind and natural gas, we're going to look at the percent deficit. And um, this percent deficit is the generation, so that bumpy curve minus the forecasted peak capacity, divided by the forecasted peak capacity. So in other words, this is basically looking at how much each energy source has either gone above or below that, that dashed line on a proportional basis to that capacity level. So how are we going to calculate this? So we'll just make a, a couple of new variables here. Recall that the data object that we're working with is GenPiv. That's our data frame. We're going to use this dot loc function to, to define some new values. So we're going to say anywhere where the fuel is equal to wind, we're going to make a new variable called capacity and set it equal to 6.1. At the same time, we're going to do the same thing, except when the fuel is natural gas, under this new capacity variable, we're going to set it to 48.4. These are gigawatts. These are the forecasted peak capacities in gigawatts that we talked about in the first video. Then, with those in place, we can calculate a new variable called deficit. That will simply be our generation in gigawatts here, minus this capacity. So that's our deficit. That's the numerator of the percent deficit. And then if we want to just get this into a percent deficit, we can to our deficit for the capital D divided by the capacity times 100%, get that into percent. So let's see what this looks like. So there we go. Here's our percent deficit. In many instances, it's negative. In other words, that means it's below the forecast peak capacity. I think some of these uh, rows that are omitted here for wind, they'd be positive. Let's visualize it. So to start off with our visualization, let's go back up to our previous visualization, borrow from that. And so we'll still do a line plot. We'll still have the same colors here, except we don't want to plot generation. We want to plot our percent deficit. And we'll color by fuel type. We'll still have blue and red. Except now, since we're looking at percent deficit, these capacities, they're not as relevant anymore. 
So let's delete those. Instead, what we want to compare to is 0%, right? So our 0% deficit, let's look at this as a black line, dashed. Both, I'm going to do it as black because regardless of whether it's wind or natural gas, we want to compare it to 0% deficit. And there we go. So the red wind, blue natural gas, black dashed line at 0% deficit. We see that natural gas is always in the negative. And wind is sometimes, perhaps most of the time, well, 64% of the time, as we learned from the test of single proportions, uh, below zero. Okay. So that's what we're going to use. We're going to use the percent deficit in the remaining um, two sample tests. So comparison of means, both paired and unpaired, and a comparison of proportions.